this is Praxis and I just got word yesterday that the excavators, the heavy machinery and everything is finally moved out to the site. It had taken a few days to get the stuff arranged for. There's always, you know, just scheduling conflicts between other people's projects and everything. So it, it took a fair number of days uh, just to get to this point. We, we also had, you know, some issues with mud and, you know, just foul weather and everything, but it sounds like we're finally able to get going, and it, it seems like within the week we should have our foundation in. Uh, it's kind of a big thing that, you know, once you cut open the ground, especially when there's like frost, you know, uh, issues or, you know, the potential for freezing and everything, you want to open the ground and then do the footing right away, you know, get the concrete, the footing is at the very bottom of the concrete wall, it's like a, you know, a heavy, thick uh, lump of concrete that sits on the bottom and the walls sit on top of that. You don't want to open the ground and then allow, you know, the cold to get in there and put frost heaves under because then you're not putting your house on something stable. So anyway, it seems like within a week, you know, that's the plan is that we're going to have the, the concrete walls all up and then, you know, building can commence. Now, it's been a long time coming to this. I mean, it's just been months and months of getting to the point where, you know, I have the building permits in hand and everything. I've got all these, uh, you know, uh, building documents, I've got like, you know, all the, the house plans and everything, I've got the, the, the site plan and, uh, and everything uh, connected with that. Uh, I've got uh, all sorts of other documents that I realized kind of at the last minute, so, like, I mean, I need to know that kind of stuff. This is something I created just last night. This is uh, an outline of where all the pass-throughs are on the concrete wall. Uh, when you throw up a concrete wall, I mean, it's mostly, you know, contiguous concrete, but there are all sorts of things you need to have coming in and out of the foundation. The most simple one is just the well line. Where's that going to come in? Because that's that comes in underground. Where your septic goes out, that goes out underground. You have to put the holes in there. Well, you don't have to, but it's preferable to put the holes in there so you don't have to be cutting through concrete later. Uh, but especially for this uh, design, I have a lot of uh, holes that are going to be for, you know, other things that are kind of unconventional. Uh, there's a hole right here through the, this is kind of a, a top-down view of our, uh, our foundation. There's a hole up in this upper left corner that is a pass-through for gray water to be going out uh, to the greenhouse area. We're going to have like an overflow tank in there, and I'm going to need to have that gray water pass through a very specific elevation uh, to go out into the greenhouse. On the uh, other side, over here, right near where the kitchen sink is going to be, there's going to be another gray water out. There's going to be a place for uh, air to pass for the wood stove, because I'm going to be getting outside air for the wood stove. And I've determined the best place to get outside air from the wood stove is from the greenhouse. Instead of ha uh, having the, the pipe uh, head out uh, you know, to the outside somewhere, uh, I decided to have it come into the greenhouse. Um, most specifically because I had two options for where the pipe could go. Uh, one was to go out the back of the house and one was to go out the front of the house. Through the front of the house would have worked, but then I would have had this big vent pipe right in the middle of my front yard, which, you know, if you can avoid that, it's kind of nice to avoid having just a vent pipe in the middle of your yard. Uh, and it would have had to come up several feet out of the ground and kind of have like a gooseneck or something like that so it wouldn't get buried in snow. So. Certainly, you know, it'd be cool if I didn't have to do that. The back wall wasn't really much of a, an option because uh, the back wall doesn't sink down another four feet down underneath the ground. Uh, so if I ran the uh, vent pipe under the floor, you'd be bringing cold air right over your footing and you'd get, you know, like I said, frost heaves around your footing in the back wall. So that wasn't going to work. And I determined the best place to bring it in was actually right from the greenhouse. It'll also keep fresh air going into the greenhouse. This is the greenhouse where I'm going to have the laundry lines Two, so bringing in fresh air into that greenhouse to resupply the air for the wood stove, that'll be a good thing. And there's all sorts of other pastures. So I had to do this entire document here. Well, actually, there's, only, there's two, only two others that are kind of of note. Uh, I'm going to have pastures that go right from the utility room through the greenhouse area and then out the other wall. And the idea there is that uh, after I get this together, I still want to do a root cellar, which will be kind of a root cellar and a potential fallout shelter. And I would like to be able to run a water line and electricity line right from the house out to there uh, so that, you know, you can have a little light inside there and, you know, and access to water and everything. So putting those holes in now while the thing's getting put together, it, now's the time to do it. Additionally, because the foundation is kind of a complex shape, uh, it's sort of stepped, it's like walk on one side, bermed in on the other side, I decided to create a model, uh, kind of for myself, but also for the, the contractors. I think... 
you know, seeing plans is great, and you know, you get all the dimensions on there and everything. But there's nothing like a real physical thing that you can kind of look at in your hands and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Now, this isn't a scale or anything like that, but when I get out there on site, uh, you know, I can orient this, and the people that are going to be putting up the walls, they can instantly know exactly what this shape is supposed to look like in the end. Uh, this is the main house area. This is about 24 feet by 33 feet. Actually, it's pretty specifically 24 by 33. And then it has these two little greenhouse things coming off to the side. Uh, each one of them is 13 feet wide by the same 24 foot dimension. There's this little entryway here uh, where the, the roof will slope down so you kind of step in here so you're not in the rain while you're trying to open up the front door. Uh, you go through there, meander into the front door of the house here. So, uh, so I put this thing together so it'll be really clear, really obvious to people exactly what this thing is supposed to look like and everyone will have it in their head and it'll just eliminate more possibilities for mistakes. Uh, I even went to the point of kind of putting this paint job on here that shows where the, the final grade levels are supposed to be. And, you know, a lot of the contractors probably can just look at the plans and be just like that. They get it. Uh, but, you know, there's always mistakes. This is, this is real life. This is the real world. And any time that you can head off a potential mistake by reiterating something or explaining it in a different way, I think that's always time well spent because it's always a lot easier to avoid a mistake than it is to fix it after the fact. I don't know if I can say the word always. Maybe sometimes it's the other way around. But generally speaking, it's better to avoid a mistake because it's oftentimes a lot of work to try to make up for it. So tomorrow's the day. We're going to be over there and directing, you know, when they start digging into the ground, because there's a lot of question marks. Once we get into that hillside, what are the rocks like? How big are they? Can they be moved? And how is this thing going to orient around them? That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Big day. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.